welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Sammy. We do DIYs, we do wood signs. We are always laughing on this channel. So if that's something you think you'd be into, then let's go ahead and watch what I chose to be my top 21 DIYs of 2021. Can you believe it's already coming to an end? Anyways, let's get right into it. We are making a stove top cover. So we need to measure length and width of our stove, including that nice plastic part, not just the inside of the stove. I went outside and cut four one by six pieces, 29 inches long, and two one by four pieces, 22 inches long. I will leave the make and the model of my stove along with all of the measurements. However, it will vary depending on your stove. So next I am taking um, Golden Oak by Rust-Oleum. We are gonna stain the front, the back, the sides, even the ends of all of our wood pieces. We are gonna allow those to dry fully before moving on. And um, this stain comparable would be Early American by Minwax. So now that those are all dry, we're gonna grab our Gorilla Glue. You could also use the wood glue from Dollar Tree. It actually works just as good. We are going to start piecing these together. So just so you guys know, a one by six actually measures out to be five and a half. So these worked out perfectly. So now I'm gonna take my clamps. We are gonna collect Ugh. clamp each side together so that our glue can set up and all this stuff is like concrete it ain't gonna move nowhere then we're gonna take our one by four pieces which essentially this is where our handles are gonna be set those on top make sure they're flush with your edges you're gonna repeat that step for the opposite side once that all dries we're gonna take our nail gun you could also you use nails and a hammer. Um, I do suggest you do this because it is a super heavy piece. So more security, the better. So after we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and take this back inside. I am gonna grab Linen White by Rust-Oleum and I'm gonna give this a pretty healthy coat of paint. Um, I do not paint the, uh, what do you call it? The bottom of this, but you are going to paint all of your sides, the front, where your handles are gonna go, just paint all of it. Once it fully dries, we're gonna take this back out to the garage. We got our orbital sander, 220 grit sandpaper, and we are gonna sand away. Now, where you put more pressure, that's where you're gonna take off more paint. So you can tell where I pressed firmly down on my board. And then you're gonna go ahead and clean that up with a rag after you're done. Now taking these stencils I made with my Cricut, this is font courier and the cursive is about love and I am using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. All of this is in my Amazon store link if you wanna head over to my channel and check that out. So we are going to rub these on, take our transfer tape off. Once we are through with that, I take the Rich Black by Folk Art. This is chalk paint and my mini roller. All I have to do is apply one coat of this. It is so jet black and beautiful, I love it. Once that dries, we'll go ahead and weed everything out. Now taking that rough sander again, we are gonna go ahead and just go over. I mean, if you want it more distressed, just hit it with the sander. After I'm done with that, we're gonna take, um, I sprayed it with clear so our black doesn't smear, and then poly acrylic. We're gonna coat it two times with this on the front and the back. After that dries, <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and measure out where our handles need to be. Now I couldn't find the original screws, so I'm using silver screws here, and then I'm just gonna paint them black, and y'all, that is absolutely it. I hope you guys enjoyed, and make sure to go vote for your favorite project. This is the final round, woo, woo. All right, bye you guys. I just cannot believe how this turned out. It is absolutely beautiful. I don't know why it took me so long to make one of these. I was so intimidated by it, but it was so easy to put together. I absolutely love it in my home and I hope you guys try it out. Make sure to tag me on Instagram. If you do, I would love, love, love to see your creations. All right, look at me all up in my garage. I have some space. All right, so we're gonna start off with this cabinet door. You can find cabinet doors on Facebook Marketplace, um, Habitat 
for humanity, things like that are great places to find these doors. So I'm using my skill sander. I like this one because it has a pointed top. So it really gets great into the corners, up against edges. And then I'm gonna go in with my orbital sander. And why I'm sanding this is one, I'm getting all that debris off of there, all that old crusty stuff. And I wanna take off the first layer that is glossy on this. So we have a nice smooth finish. So for those of you who have not seen me do DIYs with these cabinet doors yet, um, funny story, I found them on Facebook Marketplace and I contacted the gentleman. It was like 15 for free. And I was like, okay, where's pickup? And he says, oh, so-and-so funeral home. And right away I was all, what? Are these like the like samples for the different caskets you offer? Like how creepy, but you know what? It was for free. So your girl picked it up, of course. And then I get there and it turns out that uh, he used to be a cabinet maker and then ended up taking the family business, which was the funeral home. He took it over. So it was so funny. Obviously your girl will do anything for free items like go to a funeral home. I mean, shoot, it's okay. It's free, right? Okay, so anyways, off of that story. Now finishing this up, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some simple green. There is a lady, her name is Brie. I'm gonna link her channel up above right here in the cards. And I just found her. She does a lot of upcycling and she cleans all of her furniture pieces off with crud cutter before painting, which is what I need to do. So keep that in mind. So right here, I'm just taking a toothbrush, getting in all of those nooks and crannies in this frame, making sure I get all the dirt out. And then I'm just going to wipe it off, let it dry. And then I'm in here, I am taking, I'm in here, yeah, hello. I am taking Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. I'm just getting those edges, especially the corners, because this sponge roller is amazing. It has a flat edge to it. And so it gets up really great against like the sides of things. So although it was getting good there, it wasn't getting in the corners very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do three coats of this white, y'all. For some reason, I cut the second part of this frame or this video out of like me making this, which just makes me so upset. But um, yeah, okay. Well, Sammy, let's just get on with it. Okay, I'll tell you which part I cut out. So I am doing the second and third layer on this. Now I'm gonna grab some painter's tape and this is the part I accidentally left off. So after I apply the painter's tape to this, there's like an inside frame right here that I'm trying to tape off. And I do the baking soda with steel gray and I paint the inside frame that color because I wanted it to have a lot of texture. I wanted that concrete look, here we go. I don't know how I cut that out of my video, but I do show you the white part. So just, just hang in there with me. So I got pretty clean lines here. When I took the tape off, it left some like crusty, so I just dust that off with our paintbrush. And now I'm going to just go in, gotta clean up that workspace. So now I'm gonna take the Rust-Oleum Linen White, I'm gonna take the baking soda. Now the baking soda, this was my first time ever playing around with baking soda, so I don't think I added it as much as I should, but I was so happy with the texture it left me. So I'm just mixing it, I did equal parts, um, and I, I like it. It, it came out like, it almost has like a cement texture, like a pavement texture to it. And I'm sure you get more, the more you add to it, but I just went around with my brush. I applied it just like you would paint. I just smoothed it over back and forth. Now I will say because I wasn't getting like a ton of texture that I was looking for on this, I end up you know how on chalk paint when it's semi dry, like it's almost to the dry point and then you go to put another coat on it and it kind of like drags up that first coat. Well, that's what I did here. I got in with a second coat, like when it was almost dry and it started kind of like pooling it and giving it more texture. It almost looked like chipped paint almost. You can't see it in the frame but it absolutely looks so gorgeous. So there's my hunk of hunk of burning love giving me a kiss. Okay, now I made this stencil on my Cricut. Unfortunately, this is way too big. I don't know how to ship it out or else I would add it to my Etsy shop. 
Um, but I'm using Oral Mask 813 Stencil Vinyl. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna tape off all my edges so we don't make any mistakes. And then, okay, well, I'll take my transfer tape off first. And then taking that same sponge roller, we are going to do two coats over this nice thin coats. Now this ended up bleeding on me a little, which I knew was going to happen because the texture of the cabinet door was not very smooth. Um, but that's okay because I didn't want it to look polished and you know, all fancy schmancy. I wanted it to look like it was worn and rustic. That's totally my vibe. So after two coats, we peel this off. It, this is seriously like my favorite. And I think it's just our, the saying. It says our home, our life, our story, our love, our children, our dreams. This is us. And I absolutely love it. Love this. I cannot wait to put it in the home. So we're going to go ahead and weed all of those little bits and pieces I out. I don't know why I keep on the, like with this weird accent right now. I don't, I don't know. It's not a weird accent. It's just why am I doing it? Oh, it's probably because I was talking to Kathy Joe. Thanks, Kathy Jo. I'll leave her channel up above too and in my description box. So now I'm just taking my mini like uh, distressing brush by Plaid and I am distressing the edges on the outside to really bring that texture up at you. I wanted it to pop out at you and it totally did the job. Then I am taking the white and distressing the gray a little bit. And I did that because it had so many lines in it that I really wanted to stand out. And this is how it came out. Do you see, I'm, I'm trying to, it's hard because it's so bright, but it did add this beautiful texture. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. If you can get your hands on cabinet doors, grab some, because they are amazing for making signs. And I'll prop this up on our hall tree. All right, we're gonna start off with two beware signs. And I picked up this contact paper from Walmart and I figured I always use the shipping paper, trace it out, cut it. So I was like, you know what? Let's see if this is gonna be easier. So all I did was take the backing off, stick our signs with the graphics face down. I want to point out, however, that um, after I had glued the backings on, the tape did start, the, the contact paper did start to come off. So I would highly advise to scrape the, um, the glitter off if you do cho choose to go this route. Um, but yeah, I had to try it, right? All right, so those are all done. We're gonna go ahead and take some spackle, fill our holes in. You could also use wood filler as well. And if you don't have this, you could always cover it up with twine. So now taking the large paint stick stirrers, we are gonna put some super glue from Dollar Tree and our hot glue, and we're gonna hold that, uh, hold that. We're gonna put that straight into the middle. That way it's gonna hold. And this is what I'm talking about. I glued this onto the contact paper, and I don't know if it's because of the weight, it started to pull off. So. Anyways, we're gonna take the paint sticks and we're gonna put them on the top and the bottom and well as well. And this is so when you hang it, if you just were to leave that middle one in there, then your sign would be bowing off your wall. This is also gonna help you attach hangers to it. So then taking one of the crates from Dollar Tree, I'm just taking antique Waverly wax and we're going to put that on the front, the sides and the bottom. Go ahead and set that aside to dry. Now I am taking my sanding block, trying to smooth out that, what did I say? The filler, spackle, I don't know. Then taking, after that, my uh, Linen White by Rust-Oleum, we're gonna go ahead and put one coat of that on here. Now I highly recommend, if you use a lot of white, to pick up a can of this because it is a lot more cost effective in the long run. This cost me about, I think, $16 at Home Depot and like the bigger bottles of Waverly are eight. So yeah, definitely. Okay, sorry this is kind of out of order. I was just like thinking things up as I was going. So this sign is, um, they had them during Thanksgiving and they also had these signs during Christmas. Now I'm trying to get this keyhole out of here and this thing was like stuck. So I applied a lot of heat to it. I got my little spatula vinyl thing. I don't know what it's called. And then just make sure when you're taking this off, try your very, very best not to rip your box apart. So 
Now that that's all done, we are going to paint this one with Rich Black by Folk Art. Now, initially I only did the sides of this and I was going to leave the inside its brown color, but I did end up painting all of it. Then I took the crate and just to tie everything together, I went ahead and painted everything inside of there as well. All right, taking our yardstick, y'all, we are gonna make our faux shiplap lines. You can use permanent marker, black color pencils. You can also use um, just a regular pencil as well. And using my Arteza measuring mat, I'm using that as my guideline to get some really straight lines. So this turned out absolutely fabulous. As you can see, I wasn't looking for super clean paint job here. And this I'm just showing you, you can attach saw to tooth hangers to the back of it because the nails that come on those are super small. So taking some cork board here, we are going to trace out two pieces of the cork board from Dollar Tree. And the reason we're doing two pieces is because this cork board is so thin that you could not really push pin anything to it. So what we're going to do is we are going to double these up so that you can actually use push pins on it. So here we go, we're just taking the backing off and I'm sticking it on there. Easy peasy, dollar tree squeezy. I really came up with that one, isn't it cute? All right, so now playing around with the placement, we got our chalkboard, that's just a jot chalkboard from Dollar Tree. We got our little signs, and then I take the brain teaser game. Thank you, Leona, for sending this to me. And at first I was thinking maybe like some hooks, you know, for keys or whatever, but eh, I ended up scratching that idea, didn't go for it. So the professional I am, I am using a glue stick to gauge where I am going to put my signs. So I'm taking the super glue once again from Dollar Tree, hot glue, and then we are going to stick that on. And in case you're new to crafting, we use super glue for the longevity and we use the hot glue for that immediate hold. Then I'm taking my glue stick again so I have a good idea of the spacing between the two. And I go ahead and just apply that cork board right on there. Then you guys, everything is gonna be the super glue and hot glue, okay? And we're gonna put that on there. And this I thought you can put like chalk pieces, post-it notes, your push pens, I mean your keys if you wanted to. And then we're going to apply the crate and I thought this would be good for mail. Or you could put sunglasses in it. I mean, come on, the, um, the options for this are pretty endless. All right, we're almost done. I am now gonna get a decal. Unfortunately, I did find this on Cricut Design Space, so I can't sell it on my Etsy shop. But keep in mind, you can use tons of other stencils. You could use wood cutouts from uh, Dollar Tree, the wood letters from Dollar Tree. So tons of other options for this. But I was really impressed with myself that this is all Dollar Tree minus the vinyl sticker. So you guys, this is um, Arteza transfer tape and the scraper alone that this transfer tape came with was like worth the whole roll. I definitely recommend it. I'll leave the link down in the box for you. Uh, it was really good transfer tape and seriously, that scraper is like everything. I wonder if you could just buy the scraper. I don't know why it's amazing, but it is and I have a ton of them. All right, you guys, so that was it for this sign. Uh, make sure to season your chalkboard so you don't stain it. That is the worst when you have a word on there that doesn't come off. And then just wipe it away and then you're ready to use your chalkboard. And y'all, I was so impressed with how this turned out. Like how high end does this look? And I love how like modern and chic it looks. And I was actually, I was really impressed with myself and proud of myself for creating this. Let me know if this is something that you'll try and recreate. And of course, you guys, we're using command strips. That's why I didn't actually hang it. And yeah, I, I love it. DIY is inspired by creations by Favi. I saw this DIY Dollar Tree toolbox and knew I had to at least attempt to recreate it. So you guys, we are gonna start off with these signs from Dollar Tree and I already sanded them down. I'm going to paint all of them front and back in chalk paint. I did three coats on the printed side and one, or sorry, and two coats 
on the brown sides. So you're gonna have four signs in total, two of each here. And then of course, I'm going to take my mini uh, plaid chip brush, I'm gonna dip that into some antique wax, and I am going to distress this down just a little bit. You can totally leave it stark white. You can paint it whatever color you want. This is just for inspiration. So I'm gonna do all four of them like this and I do the fronts and I do the backs of them. So once we're done with that, we need to build our base. So I took the larger paint stir sticks and I sized them up against the side of what's gonna be our toolbox. And I went ahead and marked that out. Then I'm gonna grab my table saw. I do have this linked in my Amazon store link down in the description box. And I am just gonna cut all of these. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna cut all of these sticks the same length. And then I did take a sanding block to the ends of them. Now taking a uh, what is it, baby wipe and some antique wax, I'm gonna go ahead and stain those. You could do front, back, you could just do the front, it doesn't matter, but I knew I needed to stain them. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up staining them, let those babies dry, and now we're going to attach them. So I am using some um, gel super glue and hot glue. Now I'm using rulers to make sure that all of these are completely straight. Now when I measured these, they fit the sign perfectly, but you know how when you use super, not super glue, hot glue, it adds a little bit in between whatever you're doing. Do you, you guys get what I'm saying? So it actually widened my base just a little bit. And at first I was so frustrated, but I work around it and I'll show you how. So we're gonna finish attaching all of our paint sticks here. Now taking the side first, make sure your image is inside your box. I'm gonna hot glue that. I put a healthy, healthy strand of hot glue on there, held it up. It actually held very, very nicely on its own. Then I attached the second side box here. Voila, so easy. Um, and then we are going to attach the ends the same way, just attach, putting hot glue on the ends. And then as you can see, I used some Jenga blocks um, and that was just for added security, extra hold. I put them on the end as well. Now, Fabi actually uses a Dollar Tree sign for the base as well. So make sure you check out her video. All right, of course the wooden dowel I chose to use was too big, so I had to drill holes, so keep that in mind depending on what size dowel you're using. All right, so now these are the jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart. I am cutting them to size, and then I am gonna do this for eight. So you're gonna need eight of these. So all I did was measure it up against our side, and this is what is going to help hide that gap on our corners. So I stained all of them, and then I was like, girl, hello, let's just stain the dowel while you're at it. So I um, put the dowel in the holes, and I'm gonna go ahead and just mark off where I want it cut. I'm gonna use my table saw again to cut that down, and then I'm just going to do the same exact thing, baby wipe, antique wax, and then I was like, you know what, I want some like little in caps basically for my uh, dowel. So I got my sliced wood beads, I got two of them, stained them, and then that's gonna add just a little bit more detail to our, uh, I don't even know if this would be considered a toolbox. Anyways, so now I'm just grabbing some wooded dowels and we're just gonna put those in the corners. That's just for added security on the corners, just to give it a little bit more support. And I do that for all four corners here. All right. So now, taking your popsicle sticks, you're gonna put one on the side, and what you're gonna do is put it just a little bit over where um, the gap is, and you're gonna see right here how we cover the gap is we're gonna get that other popsicle stick, um, our craft stick, whatever they're called, and we're gonna butt it up to the one that's right there, and then you're not going to see any gaps on the side at all. So I'm gonna repeat that step for all Four of them. Look at how clean that looks for the other three. And let's go ahead. I'm going to jump ahead right now. There we go. All done. Now I'm going to put the um, dowel in there. I'm going to hot glue those sliced beads on the ends. And y'all, I decided to keep this super simple. Um, 
Creations by Fabi, she put a really cute farmhouse uh, stencil on them and it looked adorable. But I wanted to be able to transition this anywhere in the house so I didn't want to put anything on it. And look at how big this is in high end. This ended up being about 20 inches long. You can totally carry it by the handle and it just looks so high end. And I couldn't have done this without Creations by Fabi's inspiration. So definitely check out her link down in the description box. I'm gonna leave her channel and the video I found. Our favorite DIY, we're starting with this Springwood truck. Some comparable trucks from Dollar Tree is uh, they had a Halloween one, the fall one, and then there's this one. So we're going to go ahead and take the strings off and we are going to flip this on over and start painting. Now I do want to say I was totally inspired by my girlfriend, Jessica. She makes like the um, wood kits for tiered trays on her Etsy shop and she made basically something almost exactly the same. So I asked her if she would mind if I recreated it using Dollar Tree items. And she said, yes, of course. So I'm gonna leave her link down in my, um, her Etsy shop link down in my description box. If you guys wanna check hers out, maybe you don't have this truck. So I'll leave that down there for you. So right here, I'm taking Still Gray by Waverly and I form my back window and my mirrors. Refer I keep referencing the front of the sign so I know like where I should put things. Then taking another brush, I'm these are just makeup brushes. I'm creating my fenders. Now, I'm doing this first because I want to be able to outline the fenders before applying black to the entire thing. That way you know like, hey, these are fenders, not just some weird bumps on the side of the truck. So after outlining the windows and the side windows, I come back in with still gray and you could see, I'm just highlighting it just so you know that these are a different part of our truck. So after that, I'm gonna paint the entire truck with black. And remember, this is inspiration. You can paint this bright blue with lemons. I mean, anything you want. And then going back in again, I'm highlighting around the windows, the hood, just giving it more definition and character. I'm also going to move down to the bottom. See, I'm like referencing because I was like, what are all these little grooves for? And this was for a bumper. Sorry, I don't know why my screen got like super bright right here, but it is what it is. So now I am just going to create that uh, bumper right here. And then after we're done with that, we're going to move on to our lights. So I get my daubers. Love these daubers. Or no, I am going to do the white first. And you all, you guys, there's no rhyme or reason for what I'm doing. Like I'm just adding what I think looks great. You do you and you add as much or as little as you want to this. Now taking the daubers, I am adding some red brake lights and then I'll put some yellow or sorry, orangey lights on top of that with my um, pumpkin by Waverly. I love these daubers. You're going to see me use them again later. And now we are going to get eight Jenga blocks total and actually five of these jumbo um, craft sticks from Walmart. I don't show the other three, but we're going to just stain these in antique wax by Waverly. After this, we're going to go ahead and move on to putting together uh, the bed of our truck. So uh, you can paint these whatever color you want, of course. All right. So I recycled these. As you can see, there are two Jenga blocks glued together. And then I put them on the truck to see how far I wanted to cut these craft sticks. So I'm going to cut both of these craft sticks down. Yeah, it would not cut. I had to go and get my craft blade out because those scissors did not want to cut for whatever reason. So now I'm going to glue the craft stick to the bottom of these Jenga blocks. As you can see, I hope I'm explaining this clearly, y'all. And I'm going to take our next set, glue those to our craft stick. And now I'm going to stack these on top of each other. So on this bottom row, you should have four Jenga blocks on each side. This is gonna be the bottom of the bed of our truck, okay? There you go, easy peasy. Now taking four more on each side, I'm gonna double stack them up. That way the bed of our truck is going to come out a bit. That way you can put lemons inside of it. So get that. You could use wood glue, super glue, up to you. I chose to use hot glue for this. 
easy peasy, right? All right, now we're gonna attach that to our truck and then taking the three other um, craft sticks that I cut down to size, we are going to stack those on the front to make our like kind of bed, our uh, tailgate. So here you go, stack those on top. And I wanted to show you the crate because I know a lot of people would be like, why don't you just use the crate? But you can see it's substantially smaller than the one we built. And I thought if I would put that on, it just would have looked odd because the truck is so big. So after we're done with that, I'm going to get the sign that originally came on it. We're going to coat that twice with Rust-Oleum Linen White. And I am going to then draw some lines with my lead pencil, smear it and then draw some random lines to make it look like wood grain. And I made this decal off my Cricut. You could also use stickers. You could use your own handwriting. And now Jessica made hers interchangeable. So I was like, you know what? I am going to use these Velcro pieces, stick them on the back. That way I could change up the sign as the seasons go by. So easy peasy. And now I'm going to put a grocery bag at the bottom uh, that way it has, you know, a little bit of height there. And I chose to decorate mine with uh, Spanish moss, my lemons that were in the original Hobby Lobby bag, and a little bit of picks of the boxwood. And y'all, I really surprised myself. I don't know if y'all know, but I've never done one of these trucks on my channel. I have done the like already like cut out ones from Dollar General but I've never put one together myself. So I was very proud of how this came out. Let me know what you think down below. All right, you guys, that was a few of my favorites from this past year, this year, I guess. Um, I really can't believe 2021 is already coming to a, a close for us. I feel like this year went by so very fast and I have so much to be grateful for, thankful for, um, you know, especially you guys here on YouTube. I have grown so much this past year, not just in a subscriber count, but just as a creator and a person, a, a businesswoman, a business owner. And I truly have you all to thank for that because if it weren't for, <laughs> my kids are home. If it weren't for you guys supporting my channel and supporting me and my family, um, I wouldn't be able to do this full time. I wouldn't be able to stay home and drive my kids to work and pick them up. And now with this new baby on the way in the new year, I also get the privilege of raising my child at home until, I, you know, they go to school, which I'm okay with. <laughs> um, but I just feel very lucky and, and fortunate. And I thank you guys for giving me such a wonderful um year and I know this year hasn't been that wonderful for some people and have has not treated you well and I just hope that you guys know that there's possibilities of of it getting better there's hope there's light at the end of the tunnel and you just you know you have to find that fire you have to find that passion again and and you'll get there I promise you you'll get there and um this is the opportunity. Every year gives us new opportunities to, to grow, to change, to evolve. And I think that's what's so exciting. And um, you guys, I can't wait to spend another year with you guys here on YouTube. And again, thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you every week and every year going forward. So you guys, let's get back into uh, these DIYs. I really hope you enjoy them and I really hope you have an amazing new year. Bye. We are going to use two of these houses from Dollar Tree, hashtag Dollar. We are gonna use the shorter, wider one and then the tallest, skinniest one. So right here, I'm stacking them on top of each other. I'm marking off where I want to cut the taller house then i'm going to take my um you guys this gets really sketchy okay so i ended up just taking this out to the garage and cutting this with a jigsaw because it was it was tough all right so then i trace the inside because we pop it off you know and most of the time you can't get the paper off well this time the paper didn't want to come off so i have to retrace it this is going to let us know where to put our straws so you can definitely use wooden dowels for this. However, I didn't have those. 
So I was like, you know what? I have a bunch of straws. So that's what I ended up using here. So we're gonna put that all the way across, voila. And we will have like one that kind of goes over to the side, but we will fix that. So I am just taking my craft knife. I'm going to cut those down. We will have to cut just a little bit more off so that it fits back into our little house frame here. Then um, you can see right here, I had marked it off, remember, with the pin. So I kind of just kind of guess where I'm cutting, but luckily I cut in the right spot. Then that extra little straw we needed, I just cut that in half and it fits perfectly, perfectly in there. So now I'm going to take Elephant Gray by Waverly, do two coats, then taking Brushed Metal by Folk Art and some uh, Truffle by Waverly. I mix the two and I'm just pouncing it on with my stencil brush. This is going to give it that like rusted tin barn look, which I absolutely love. And who doesn't love folk art? Made in the USA. All right. So after cutting that top piece, you can see I'm going to go ahead and pop that out again. I'm going to clean up all of that glue. Now, what I should have done here was butt up the bottom story of our house and trace that out as well, but I, we work with it. So again, taking more straws, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just glue them all the way across. I cut them just like I did the other ones. Now I'm taking the top part of my house. I traced it where I needed to cut. Again, like I said, we do this exactly like the bottom story, y'all, except I made it harder on myself. <laughs> All right. So before we piece them together, I'm going to take these jumbo popsicle sticks. These were just scrap pieces. I didn't even like try to measure them or anything. I took the uh, moss green by Waverly and we are going to draw basically windows. I didn't want them as doors. I wanted them more to look like windows. So I distressed them down, then getting a detailed brush. I'm going to kind of create some shadows around the windows with this. I don't know about you guys. I don't paint like very often, but when I do, not like this is even considered painting, but it really relaxes me. I should paint on canvases more often. I don't know. So as you see, I'm just making some lines. You can make them doors too. Oh, there's little hands creeping on in as usual. So after we're done with this, we are going to piece our house together. And I'm just going to use some <laughs> Sam hot glue for that. So as you can see, we painted the top just like we did the bottom. We're gonna hot glue around. It fits in perfectly. And then we are now going to hot glue the top on. Look at how, this looks so stinking cute, y'all. Oh my gosh, I love the like the fake tin. Look at how good that looks. All right, we're gonna glue on our windows. And then I ended up adding um, like a thin little cross with like sticks on the top of it. I ended up adding that later because I felt like it needed to be a church or something, you know? Which, I mean, don't put the cross on there. Make it just like a cute little farmhouse. That's up to you. But I really like how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. It was fun, it was easy, and we made it work without dowels. Let's All get right. into this DIY. So I'm taking two fence pieces from Dollar Tree. This was my first time working with them. Now I start off using chalk paint. I highly recommend if you have some good weather, just take it outside, put a couple coats of white matte spray paint on this because you will have to paint the other side as well. Then I realized, you know what? I should have cut the legs off first. So I tried scissors. That didn't work. It was too thick. Like I've said, I've never worked with one of the fences before, um, so I didn't know if you could use scissors or what, but my wood burning tool right here worked great. It melted right through the legs and gave me a nice clean cut on those. So make sure to cut all six of the legs off. Then we're gonna go ahead and attach them. So they have little clips on the side. At first I wanted a circle. Uh, no, it didn't end up being a circle. It's more like a diamond, but it still looks good. So I got wooden dowels from um, Walmart. I cut them down to size and I painted them white. I'll leave the measurements for those in my um, hop video. Then I'm gonna attach it with some hot glue. Now you guys, make sure you put a good amount of hot glue. Make sure you have um, like points, like right where those 
those curled right there, that's where I put it because I didn't want it lopsided. So again, douse it with hot glue, like pour some hot glue on that. You know what I'm saying? All right, now we're putting another one on the top. And I thought, okay, this is gonna be added security. I don't want it to buckle like with heat and all the weather changes. And it's gonna help us when we add our lighting. So I got this greenery from Marketplace and I am just easily going to loop these in the little curls on top. I love that this worked out. No hot glue needed for the greenery, which I love. Then taking some yellow from Dollar Tree, yellow, <laughs> yellow flowers from Dollar Tree. We're going to go ahead and stick those in there. Just loop them throughout the greenery. Again, no hot glue. That is what is awesome. Imagine changing this out with Christmas decor. Of course, I was watching Dollar Tree hauls. Um, or like fall leaves and oranges and oh, it's so beautiful. And like you could put this in your house in a screen porch. I'll be using it on our patio. So possibilities are really endless with this since we aren't using any hot glue. So after we're done with all of our florals, I found you guys finally that's what like uh inspired all of this a couple weeks ago I made it and it was because of the LED lights I found and I painted them white voila okay so I am also going to take some clear fishing line well it's usually clear and then some chains from Dollar Tree I'm going to go ahead and tie that fishing line on to the lights now I had a ticket to the struggle bus with this because I was doing it by myself. I highly recommend if you have somebody that can help you hold the chandelier up, it will, it will make your life so much easier, okay? I did not have that help, but I made it work. So I'm just gonna double knot these on here. I'm gonna do four. I'm gonna do two on the bottom dowel and two on the top dowel. And what's nice is you can still kind of move them around once you tie them on that dowel. So once we are done, getting all of those on. I'm just going to attach the chain and that is absolutely it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to vote for your favorite project and I will see you on my hot video. So this was my first entry into the contest and I was so happy with the way it turned out. I love the bright, vibrant colors. When those lights turn on, it's absolutely stunning. And I cannot wait until we get our patio together in the backyard. So I could put this under the canopy. I think it's going to look absolutely, there's Hank, gorgeous. Look at the lights. And can you believe like everything but the actual greenery was from Dollar Tree, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. Okay, this next one is 110% inspired by Julie's signs and designs. Hashtag Avi because I've been binge watching her. Okay, so you guys, this, it, all of this was, well, all of the wood was free. Found it on the side of the road from Facebook Marketplace. Spindles I found at the market where my booth is. And you guys, oh, this came out so amazing. So these are, the, the sizes are going to depend on your spindle size so keep that in mind i can leave you the measurements but it's going to depend on whatever spindle you choose to use so right here if you see the piece of wood that's closest to you that's going to be our bottom and i measured that against the spindle i'm going to be using to determine the size of my spindle box so me making wood signs, I feel like there was like a way to do this almost like making a sign. But then I ended up going back to how Julie showed how she did it in the video, which was saving the bottom of the box for last. So do you see, I really had to think about that. So I have the sides up and then I'm going to panel these sides because this is like barnwood fencing it was really thin so i had to double it up now you can see i'm using my nail gun i forgot to put wood glue on these so i will do that in the future and y'all if you are afraid of power tools do not be learn how to use them correctly and i promise they will take your projects to the next level i can't say that enough they are worth trying to learn how to use so you can see, I just attached those to the side. It's already coming together. If you guys want a full tutorial on like how I cut this, 
sized it, please let me know and I can do that because I will definitely be making more of these in the future. And um, I, I love, love, love this. Thank you, Julie, so much for the inspiration. Um, she's just so full of so many ideas. I'll leave her link down in the description box for you guys so you can check out her channel. Okay, so we got the bottom in there and it fits almost perfectly. It's a little wiggly, but that's okay because you can always change out your nails to be longer, which I didn't have to do. So I just nailed those on each side. Now we're gonna take our spindle. <laughs> now this is where it's like, your measurements aren't always right because I measured the bottom based off the spindle, yet the spindle didn't fit in there. So I had to take it to the garage, cut it down just a little bit. Look at how beautiful that spindle is. So your girl, Julie, is cray cray and she uses like these thin spindles and shoots nails through them and I was too scared to do that. So I chose the spindle because of its thickness. I thought I would have more of, um, what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? More of a chance of hitting the nail in the spindle if it was thicker. So as you can see, it like went in there exactly where I needed it to. I'm gonna take this nail gun. I am so scared right now. Did you see my face? I was like, ah, oh, it didn't go through the wood, yay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. I'm gonna put a few more nails in there just to make sure it's nice and secure. And I, do you see that? I'm like, yay. Okay. So now I'm taking some floral, floral foam by Dollar Tree. I am not gonna hot glue these to the bottom and I chose to do it that way because whether I choose to keep it or sell it, I wanted people to have the option of taking the foam out if they wanted to put glass jars in there or roll up some, you know, like washcloths or whatever it may be, they would have that option to change it up according to their decor. So I am putting three blocks in here. I'm gonna be taking picks from Dollar Tree, which were la from last year. And then these, I think they called them mixed berry like bundles from Walmart. Y'all don't skip out on Walmart for florals because they're very affordable and I think they're great. Meet my ladybug. Uh, you can find her on my Amazon link down in the description box. Her name's Vivian. I don't know, I just made that up right now. I think because Everly said her baby doll's new name was Vivian. Okay, Vivian reminds me of Pretty Woman. Okay, anyways, now we're gonna play around with it. This is what's fun about florals is nothing is permanent with floral foam. So you can take it out, you can move it around. I chose to do these, put these picks in here. I actually take off those leaves because they definitely don't go with the greenery. And um, I use, like, like I said, two of the bundles from Walmart and then three of the picks from Dollar Tree. I love these neutrals with the barn wood and y'all check out how this came out. I, I love this. I love the natural wood color. I love that there's a story to it. There's character. I love the neutrals because, I mean, you can just take out those picks and change them accordingly. So let me know if you're gonna try to make this and love it. All right, so you guys. I'm just taking an Easter sign. We're gonna rip all the stuff off of this side. Paint the back with uh, Rust-Oleum Linen White. Now, you need to put enough paint on there. So don't put too light of a coat. Don't put too heavy of a coat because we're gonna go in with this wood grain tool. So I'm gonna put this in my Amazon store link. Um, it's, I think like under $8 and there's quite a few pieces that come with it. Um, and you essentially are just rocking it back and forth, back and forth. And let me tell you, you need some practice. I've already tried doing this for a DIY once and ended up throwing it in the trash because I thought it looked horrible, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it another go. So I'm tapping it on my mat so that I could get the excess paint out of the grooves there. Then I kind of try it down and I'm like, no, I'm gonna pass this through one more time just to see if I could get the look that I, I want. And let me tell you, it looks kind of funky from this image, but once you see it put all together, like holy wood grain, it looks amazing. Definitely need more practice with it though. So after that is all dry, I go to my uh, computer, duh, hashtag duh, and I just print these out. I just have a regular printer and I am going to cut all of them out and I'm gonna use them as stencils. 
So I am just going to take my lead pencil. This would probably have worked better if I would have uh, printed them on cardstock. It would have been a little thicker, but it works. It did the job. So I'm going to go ahead and trace these all out. The H, the M, and the E here. Easy peasy. All right, now taking my Arteza paint pens, I will leave the link for these down in the description box. I am outlining these, and the reason I outlined them first was so that I could kind of have like a paint inside the lines kind of thing going on. I would have my straight lines, I would be able to paint inside of them, and it would just make it so much easier on me to keep it neat and crisp. So now taking another makeup brush, this is actually an eyebrow brush, and I am going to paint the insides of the HME. How many times am I gonna say HME in this? I don't know, but y'all are picking up what I'm putting down. I'm, I'm feeling it, okay? So after we're done painting all of these, I didn't say HME, I just did, okay. So anyways, moving on. This is Rich Black uh, by Folk Art. All right, so now that we're done with that, I'm just taking my sander and I'm sanding that down because the marker actually turned up brighter than the chalk paint, which I mean, that was probably gonna happen and it worked blending it all together. So now taking this round piece of, piece of tape, roll of tape, I just traced it out so we had a nice base for where the direction that our wreath was gonna go. So now taking boxwood from Walmart, I am just gonna put this all around and let me tell you the boxwood actually does very well with hot glue it doesn't melt it worked great so i'm going to follow this around my circle i'm not going to show you all that it's kind of boring then i am going to just kind of fill in where i think it looks bare or maybe you could see the hot glue um and after this i'm going to grab this bag of lemons got them at hobby lobby six dollars fifty percent off and i love that they have a variety of sizes in there so I'm gonna take the smaller ones and I'm gonna hot glue these. Now make sure when you're hot gluing them, you press down because you want them to attach to the greenery and the sign. That way when you lift your sign up, you don't have like the lemons kind of hanging at you. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish those. Then taking this gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree, we are going to put that in as our hanger. I thought this looked so cute and it turned out way better than I would have imagined. So I'm really happy with the outcome. And don't think I'm leaving the back like that. Do not. You guys know me a little better than that. So oh, look at that poor bunny. Yes. Yes, girl. That needs to be covered. Like imagine picking that sign up and seeing that scary bunny on the back of it. No. So we go ahead and put it, put it on our shipping paper, cut it out. Now we have a nice clean back, all that hard work. Make sure to cover the back, you know, just make it look like it's store bought. And look at, look at this. Look at it. It's so stunning. That wood grain that pops through. Whew. Yes, I am feeling this. Let me know how you uh, feel about the wood grain on this DIY project. This DIY was inspired by Liz over at the official Craft Nerd. And I had seen her do this a while back and knew at some point I wanted to recreate it. Now, I remembered it. It's been a while since I saw the video. I remember I thinking that these were Jenga blocks. Well, they weren't. You have to go watch her video because her version of this is so much more intricate. It's absolutely insane. But again, her channel link and video link will be down in the description box. So I'm taking this 12 inch like wood cut out. It's from Hobby Lobby and I'm brushing on some antique wax. I'm just being messy with this, the, no rhyme or reason. And I'm gonna take some chiffon by Rust-Oleum and I'm gonna mix them together. So I'm using the same paintbrush and these both are wet. So I'm just trying to blend them in and they make this like beautiful brown gray color. I don't, I don't know what it is. So next we're gonna take this stove top cover and we're gonna apply, you guessed it, super glue and hot glue and we are going to attach our wood piece to the top of this okay so now we're going to flip that around we're going to go ahead and take a jenga blocks a lot of them so right here first i try putting hot glue on the jenga block and then trying to press it up against there well that doesn't work very well 
So then I decide I'm going to use, uh, apply the hot glue on the side of the Jenga block and then on the rim of the stove top and the rim of the wood piece, which I will show you right here. So on the side, the rim, the rim, and then press the Jenga block up to it. Now this ended up working best, and I know it doesn't seem like, oh my gosh, that's gonna hold it all, but we will, I'm gonna show you how we fix that. So then of course your girl does not measure, and I'm like, oh my gosh, is this gonna fit? Like, do I, are these jingle blocks going to fit or am I going to have a huge gap? Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So of course we want our jingle blocks to match the inside. So I'm just taking a stencil brush from Dollar Tree, getting that antique wax. We're going to go around the top and the inside. And I don't do the outside yet because to blend these colors, they have to be wet. So I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around. And then we're just going to take that chiffon chalk paint once again, and then we're going to blend the two together. Now you don't you don't want to pack on the chiffon chalk paint because I'm well unless you want it super chiffon colored, but I liked how it looked blended like this and kind of like multicolored. So we're gonna do the same thing for the outside. Now taking some nautical rope from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna start at some point. And I'm taking a bead of hot glue. And what's nice about this is we are putting that hot glue right where that Jenga block and the wood piece meet. And then we are putting that nautical rope right there. So the nautical rope is helping us hold those Jenga blocks to our, our pieces. Oh gosh, I'm a mess. So then we're just hot gluing those together. And now starting at the same place, that we started the inside at, we are going to now start wrapping the nautical rope on the bottom outside of our tray. This is going to give it more stability and more hold of like those Jenga blocks. And I'm using these silicone mats. Thank you, Mama Mickey, for sending them because they are amazing. And I'm seriously putting the hot glue like on the very, very bottom of the Jenga blocks, basically touching the silicone mat because I wanted the nautical rope to sit flush with the table. And we're gonna go ahead and keep wrapping this all the way around. And just like we did with the back, we are going to cut that off and then we are going to attach the two together. So whenever I close off, like I cut and I'm trying to attach, I'll put hot glue on the starting piece as well. That way they kind of just like click together, glue together. I don't know, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You picking up what I'm putting down? All right, so I can't wait to show you how this turned out. Oh my gosh, okay. Thank you, Liz, for this inspiration. Okay. Let me know, of course, which one is your favorite, but look at the color on this tray. It's gorgeous. This is going to go with any of my decor. I love that it's a bigger size. Like I am recycling this old frame from fall. All I'm doing is taking my heat gun. We are going to warm up that hot glue so that I can take everything back off. You can also, whatever's remaining, it just kind of peeled off it was pretty easy and then you'll just sand down the excess and that's again if you have something like this i also have done this diy i'm going to leave the links for you down in the description box um a couple different ways so i am taking my truffle by waverly and i am taking my waverly chalk brush and i am brushing it on there now i wanted a distressed look but this frame was ivory and I was going for white. So I ended up deciding, you know what? I'm going to cover it up just a little bit more. But I did keep some open spots because I wanted it to look like wood grain. So I'm going to go ahead and completely cover the entire sign with the truffle paint. And then we're going to move on to our next step. Maybe. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to measure the inside of my frame. So I think it was like 16 by 12. Then taking some foam core board, I am going to measure that down using my craft knife. 
make sure that fits perfectly in there. Voila, it does. Now taking painter's tape, I am going to create some stripes. So you're gonna get a little piece, just like I did right there, and go further up though, go in the middle. I don't know why I went so far down. And we're gonna use that as a guide, and that's going to give us straight lines, and it is also going to give us the perfect amount of spacing in between each of our stripes here. So now taking Still Gray by Waverly, I am just gonna paint this right on there. Of course, you guys, this is preference. Um, I decided to cover the entire thing. You can do like a distressing, whatever you want to do, but we are going to dry brush on top of this. So I'm gonna finish painting, then we're gonna take off and see those crisp lines. Oh my gosh, there's nothing more beautiful than crisp lines, let me tell you. And I used my expensive painter's tape, so you know your girl is saving this. All right, so now taking some white Waverly chalk paint, I am dry brushing it on the gray and the white board. I get it. It's white, but it does show up and it makes it look like it's painted. So, and then I mess up on the last stripe and I kind of like go ham and oh, right there. Ay, ay, ay. Did not want that, but you know what? You just got to work with what you got, right? So we're going to finish that up. Now we're going to set that aside. Now taking one of these wreath forms from Dollar Tree, I am cutting it up. We're gonna use the two middle rings here. Now taking burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to wrap this baby around. I'm just gonna keep on wrapping it. I'm pulling tight and then we're gonna hot glue it again at the end. This is gonna give us a great base to put our greenery on so we're not trying to attach it to the little skinny round piece things, you know. Okay, you guys get it. All right, so now taking some firm, this is actually from Walmart and I had it in my stash, but you guys, look at how amazing that like bended, bent, bended, you know what I'm saying, to the round wreath form. And I thought it was just different than using boxwood. A lot of us do use boxwood lamb's ear, which I love and I have a bunch of it. This just looks, I don't know, different. It looks, I don't know, to me like, upscale, higher end. So I go ahead and I just layer a few of those fern pieces on just to make it look nice and full. This stuff attached so easily to the burlap and each other, it didn't melt, it was really awesome. So after you get that full and how you like it, then we are going to, um, I just added little pieces of the leaves on the little bald spots where you could see the burlap still. So now taking the remainder of that burlap ribbon, I am going to play around with our placement here. I have it on our foam board, just seeing where I want it to lay. I made a decal, which will be available in my Etsy shop for you. I'm just gonna hot glue the ribbon to the back of our foam board. And you guys, like I said, I have made this a couple different ways. I have made it with paint sticks as the frame and I have made a bigger, uh, like big version of the foam board with a bigger picture frame. So definitely check those out. All right, so I applied my Oracle 651 permanent vinyl. It says pray, wait, trust. Really love that saying. And now we are just going to pop this in. Now, we majority of us know foam board likes to start bending when you apply paint to it. So what I had to do here was Put some hot glue on the inside of the frame, which didn't bother me. I could always rip it out, right? But on the right side where I had cut just a little too much, I had to get a craft stick, hot glue it in there so it didn't like bow back out. And yeah, all check this out. Would anybody in their right mind ever think that I made this with Dollar Tree items, Walmart items. I mean, no, they would think I got this at Hobby Lobby and that's exactly the way I intended it to be. All right, so we're gonna take three signs, big, medium, small, right here, as you can see. We're gonna take all of these apart. So take the twine off, take all of the you know eyeballs and bows and all that stuff. So now I am taking some antique wax. I am putting a good amount on there, but I'm not oversaturating it. I'm I would say a light coat. I would say a pretty light coat. Now taking my wood grain tool, look at how cool this is, y'all. I have this in my Amazon store link in my description box. And 
You're gonna lay down the wax. I'm gonna do it one more time for you guys. You can also do this with paint. I'll link a video down below where I actually used chalk paint instead of the wax to do this. And you're gonna take the tool and all you do is rock it back and forth. And then I'm kind of tapping the excess wax off and go back and forth, just rock it. There you go. So I can do the same for the top, but for some reason this one was like sucking up the wax. But we're gonna let those dry. I let them dry overnight. And look at that. Yes, sis, that is what I'm talking about right there. Okay, sorry, I'm moving around in my seat because I'm super excited. But now that that's done, we are going to piece these together. So you guys, you get, I have to cover up the back. Who would want to like lift up a sign or what we're making a shelf and then accidentally see that scary, like dismembered bunny? Nobody. My kids would like absolutely freak out. Anyways, I'm hot gluing this on some shipping paper. We're going to cut that out. Now you have a nice finished back. It's going to look like we bought this somewhere instead of making it. And that is always the vibe I'm going for. I want to have a finished product. So now I took a black dowel, cut it down to 24 inches, taking my sliced wood beads. I have those in my Amazon cart as well. These are the 15 millimeters. I put them on the ends so that our ribbon doesn't come off. All right, so now I'm taking the faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. Right here, you guys, I'm just, I am trying to find the length that I want for our ribbon. So I wrap it around. And then taking my dowel, I'm just playing around with placement, seeing how far I want it to hang off. Then I go ahead and cut that. Then I'm gonna cut in an additional one. Now we're gonna start piecing this together. So I tried my best to, we don't want this wonky and we don't want it lopsided. So I'm gonna start off with some hot glue. I put just a little bit of my leather ribbon on the edge. Now I wrapped the entire thing around because I wanted this to look high end. I wanted it to look finished. So I thought this added more detail. So I wrap it around and now I attach my second one. And the reason I did this was because I was trying to match up the exact amount of ribbon that I used on the other side. I hope y'all are picking up what I'm putting down here. So again, I'm wrapping this all the way around, hot gluing as I go. And now we're going to attach the straps to the opposite side. So to do that, I just used a scrap piece of ribbon just so I could see how wide to glue it down. That way it was even on each side. You know, I get my, my madness. I don't know if you guys do, but see, look how cute that is. And we're going to make three of these. That's why we did a large, medium, and small. So again, for this one, I don't know why I glued that down first, but we're doing the same thing, except I'm not gluing. I am just trying to find out how long I need my ribbon and then I will cut. So I'm going to hold that up again, see what kind of spacing I want in between my shelving. Sorry for my little Nike boy. Um, and I cut that down and then we're gonna cut two more and we're gonna do the same thing, you guys. We're just wrapping it around, gluing it. You're gonna do this same step for shelf number three, or you can just leave it as two shelves. That's completely up to you. But I thought this turned out so, so good, you guys. I cannot wait for you to see the finished product. And I will say, I actually ran out of this ribbon, but I had the dark brown one. I took it outside and spray painted it black and it was amazing. Look at this. All right, you guys. Woo -woo. Oh my gosh, you guys, this makes me so happy. I am so proud of myself for making this. I just think that it looks so high end. It looks so modern farmhouse. It's rustic. And I mean, it's not going to hold the heaviest thing in the world, but I think it's amazing and I hope you do too. And on to our next DIY. So for this one, we're going to use the new boxes from Dollar Tree. You know, the nesting boxes that they came out with. So I was having some difficult times with these stickers, but I took them off, rubbed some um, nail polish remover on them and 
it ended up coming off. So we are going to deconstruct all of these, not deconstruct them, we're just taking the label thing thingamajiggers off of here, setting them to the side because we will be using them later. And then we are going to start painting these. So I decided to paint mine using Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. I am going to paint the, basically all of it. The tops, the insides. No, I lied. We're only going to paint the ins. No, we're going to paint the inside of the two big ones, but you do not have to do the small one. So I just do one coat on the sides and then two coats on the tops, or I should say bottoms of two of them. So I hope, well, you'll see when you guys when you guys need to keep watching, you know. Okay, so now we're going to take, uh, I think it was four, five, six, seven, eight dowels from Dollar Tree. These are the 12 inch. You're gonna paint them all white. And then I'm going to take this brushed metal by Folk Art, which is made in the USA, y'all. And we are going to paint these because they were more of the brass color and I was going with grays and everything. So I decided to use this brushed metal and it came out absolutely gorgeous. Now, I start putting these back on, but I am going to distress these boxes. So I highly recommend doing that before you put them on work smarter, not harder, you know? All right, so now taking my plaid mini chip brush, which is absolutely amazing, I am going to distress all of it. The inside of this box right here, because the other two, you won't see the insides. Okay, so we're gonna take our hot glue gun. We're gonna take our dowel sticks and dowel rods, whatever they're called. And I'm putting the hot glue towards the bottom and the sides. And then I'm pushing the dowel rod down and up against the sides of the wall. So you can see right there, we're gonna do that for all four of them. So this is going to be the bottom. That's why I painted the inside of this box. Or you can keep it the colors that they are because the colors are absolutely gorgeous on these. I was just, you know, it was, it was going with all my DIYs. So I painted it white with gray. All right, so after we're done with that, we're gonna take the next bigger box and we're going to apply hot glue in there and we're going to slide the dowels down in there, let it set up for a minute before you flip it back around. After that settles up, then we are going to start playing with our dowel sticks on the side, which we are going to create an X shape. So your first dowel rod will sit flush with the walls of the um, square boxes. However, you guys, my hair and my forehead, hello. Um, this is how you know I'm involved in this DIY. I get all up in the camera. All right, so this one is not gonna sit flush. So you do need to hold it there just a little bit longer just so you make sure that it's, it's stuck in there good, okay? But it does work, I promise. I'm gonna do the same thing for the opposite side of this, and then we're gonna move on to the top of our lantern. So here's our little guy, and I'm putting the hot glue towards the inside of the box. That way when we put it on top, it doesn't spill out. We don't want that. All right, so now taking this little pail, I'm gonna actually take the handle of it, and I played around with a bunch of different wooden pieces, and uh, I end up going with the little square pieces from Dollar Tree. As you can see, I squeezed the side handle so that we can fit them into the holes of if you wanna use beads. I ended up drilling holes in these little squares, and the handles actually fit in there. You'll see soon after I, I finish doing this. There we go. And that's gonna be the top piece to our lantern. So here you go, I thought that was fun. I loved the details on these boxes with the little label holders. I don't know what they're called, y'all. But I thought this was super chic, it was easy to make, and hopefully you guys can find these boxes. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY. Now we're moving on. So we are gonna start with Free wood, you guys know I love my free wood. I stalk Facebook Marketplace on the daily for it. Um, I jacked Megan from Cool Guns and Roses because I wanted to show y'all. I literally go on Facebook Marketplace, either search free wood or I search it so much it just pops up. And you can see right here, free wood palettes. I scroll up a little bit more, 
free wood pallets. And I am so lucky because I live in Kansas. So like barn wood is pretty accessible to me. These I found on the side of the road for free. So we're going to go ahead and build our box. What I did was the bottom piece. I took that and that's how I based my measurements off of. And then I measured, I'm going to call them my end caps, uh, my end caps first, and then my side panels second. So this is going to be super easy peasy, just like that spindle box we made. And I'm going to prop the end caps at first. I'm like, how am I going to do this? Do I want to build the frame first, attach it all to the bottom first? I'm always a hot mess. And then I end up doing it the same way. I always do it. So I take these end caps and you could see, I have them sideways. And then I take my side piece, I'm going to staple three top, bottom, middle on each side here. You guys invest in a nail gun. Um, mine is battery operated nail gun. And then we're just going to go, we're going to attach the second side. Now, if I were to be selling this in my booth, I would definitely have applied some wood glue on these pieces and then nailed it. But since it's for my personal use, I was totally fine with nails. If you don't have a nail gun, you can just use an old school hammer and nails and it works. Okay. So now I'm trying to fit the bottom in here and I'm like, no way. Like I measured this. I know it's supposed to fit. I'm like starting to freak out here. And then I just go rogue and I'm like, all right, I'm grabbing my, <laughs> my wire cutters and I'm just going to start like hammering the crap out of this. So I start like banging on the side on the top and finally like it pops in you guys like per Perfection fits snug as a bug in a rug, like seriously. And then I just get all like nail happy. And these nails do not show. These nails are so, so tiny. Even if they did show, I wouldn't care because it would look more rustic. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and put all of the nails in here. And then you guys, our box, our centerpiece, it, it's done. And this was all for free. So after I'm doing uh, the nails, now I'm going to decorate this. Now I've never owned one of these. I've never decorated one of these. So I had no idea what I was doing, but I just went for it. So I, that is a candle holder from Dollar Tree. Now I'm taking these LED candles that I found at Savers. I think they were like $1.99 each. Go me. And I am going to start filling this up with some florals. So I am taking some lambs here from Walmart. $2 for two picks. We are going to use the um, blue leaves from Dollar Tree and then the blue leaves that like came with the pumpkin and like the little berries in it. Now these velvet pumpkins I got from Dollar Tree last year. I don't know if they have this color this year because I haven't been able to find the velvet pumpkins in my Dollar Trees. So I am, what I like about this and why I've been so into wreaths lately is because it's so fun that you can change this all around and add or take away or, you know, do whatever it is you want to them. And that's also why I do not add any floral foam. I don't want to glue anything down. I want to be able to change this out by season. So as I'm filling this all in. I'm just playing around with placement here. I do cut all the leaves off of like the main bundle. That way I can place them here and there. Then I realized what am I going to do with these two like large holes? I can't just fill them with flowers. So then I get these, my lace pumpkins. I'll leave the video for these pumpkins down in the description box for you. So I add these and they were seriously like the most perfect touch. Then I run out of the blue leaves, but I have holes everywhere. So I grab these eucalyptus pieces. These are from Walmart. These are actually new to Walmart and they're only a dollar, but they definitely look like a dollar. And I just cut little pieces off of these and then just stick them wherever I see holes or I could like see down to the bottom of the base. And y'all, like this came out so much better than I would have ever thought. I am going, I, now I'm going to base my whole kitchen dining room in this blue color and it's gorgeous. And I love this rustic barn wood. I love that I can change this out by season and it's going to be probably a permanent piece on my kitchen table that I can change up 
with the season. So let me know what you guys think about this Kirkland's inspired piece and if you will be trying to create one of your own. All right, you guys, this one looks like a lot of work, but it's not. So I'm taking this footboard, this weathered piece of wood, and we are going to measure this so that it fits inside the two legs of the footboard. So I'm going to measure it, mark it off. I'm going to go ahead and use my saw and we are going to cut that end piece off. Easy busy. And then I just make sure it fits, which it does. Now, actually I saw this on DIY Beauty on purpose, my competitor, and um, she just took a spatula, was dipping it in the paint and then kind of rubbing it on so that it gave it more of like a chipped wood effect. I didn't want this to be all red, so I decided to do it this way and then I pat it down with a rag. Okay, so now I'm taking Linen White by Rust-Oleum. We are taking this heavy duty uh, chalk paintbrush and I am gonna coat this entire thing. So the front and the back, I do give the front two coats of paint and I only gave the back one coat of paint because to be honest, I was running out of paint. So <laughs> there's that. All right, so now that that's almost dry, you guys, and I say almost dry, I'm getting a baby wipe and I'm distressing where I think it would naturally de-stress. Now, the more pressure you put on, the more paint you're gonna take off. And then um, make sure you're switching out your baby wipes or you're just going to keep smearing the paint over itself, basically. So you wanna make sure that I probably used for this whole thing like fit, five baby wipes. So keep that in mind when you are using the wet distress method here. I love the way that it comes out and I love that you have more control over how you are distressing your piece and how much distressing you're putting on there. So I'm not going to put you through the torture of watching me do all of that. So I continue to distress the footboard and then we are going to move on to simply putting D hooks on the back of these. I'm just gonna screw it on that side, the opposite side. That's what we're gonna use to hang. And they hang up to 50 pounds. Look at my Batman and my mom, he's so stinking cute. Okay, so now I'm sorry this angle is horrible, you guys, but I'm taking the Gorilla Glue and I put it on the base of that footboard. Then I put my weathered piece of wood up against it and now I'm, oh, I did so good though, you guys. I'm using my nail gun and I was eyeballing where I was gonna put this, but it all turned out okay. Only one nail came out the front, so we were good. All right, now taking this, uh, it's kind of like a silk screen um, stencil. I got this from Joanne some time ago and it works incredibly. So I am taking Nantucket Blue, my stencil brush by Dollar Tree, and I am just going to um, stencil that on. <laughs> Hashtag duh. All right, and then after we're done with that, while it's still wet, I peel it back and you guys, that's it. That's all there is to it. It's done. This piece turned out more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. I love the simplicity of it. I love how you can take one person's trash and make it treasure again and make it something amazing. And it's definitely a statement piece and I can't wait to see it in somebody else's home one day. Technique, we are trying the candle distressing technique again. Okay, so this was actually a rose art like toolbox thing. I don't know. I spray painted it white. I was going to use it for another DIY. Never did it. So here we are today. All right. So I am going to take, this is actually charcoal by Rust-Oleum. I'm taking my candle. This is a scented candle. It's just from Dollar Tree and I am rubbing it everywhere on the sides, on the edges, on the handles, everywhere and anywhere except like the actual like very bottom of it. I'm rubbing it. So um, after that is done, I'm gonna get my paint. I am going to paint the entire thing. I won't show you that because, you know, then you'd probably click off and never come back. But I do show you some of it. So as I start going to the sides, you can see like on the handle, how it's already separating from the candle wax. Now you need to thoroughly dry the paint first. I'm learning y'all, I'm learning. I like how I'm teaching you guys, like I'm like so pro at this when I'm definitely not. Okay, now taking the scraper, you can see the different 
like distressing it gives versus the Vaseline. Like this one is like, do you see how it looks like it's like scraped off? I don't know. This this version I feel like looks a little bit more rustic to me. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I don't know. But I do like the way it turned out. And I like that there's these different distressing techniques for different ways you want things to look basically. So I just continued to do that. We're gonna go ahead and set the toolbox to the side at some point. Ooh, look at that, yes. So remember, the more candle wax you put on, the more distressing you're going to have here. So after we're done with that, I'm taking one of these wood planks from Dollar Tree, painting it charcoal gray. I'm gonna let it dry, and then I am going to take the candle again, rub that on top, and then take, <clears throat> excuse me, white chalk paint we're gonna put that over you're going to let that dry as well and then we're gonna take our scraper again and look at that Ooh, that looks good so you can see too this almost looks more like the vaseline so maybe it's different depending on what kind of material you're doing it on so this was a transfer uh rub on transfer i had gotten from joanne's a long time ago needless to say it did not work i think it was because of the candle wax but I just get my Dollar Tree stencils. I go in a like diamond shaped because we're gonna put that little crystal knob right in the middle of this. You could also use a button if you want, or you don't have to do this at all. That is up to you. But toolboxes are so fun because you can use it to hang things with. You can use them as shelving. Here we're making a faux like drawer sort of say and i'm going to do the fix it all super glue from dollar tree put that around the edges then put our hot glue in the middle for the immediate hold and apply that on there and look at how gorgeous this looks and it was so easy this toolbox cost me 2.99 and then of course the dollar wood plank those crystal knobs i think were like ten dollars for 12 on amazon so a beautiful piece and we did not have to spend a lot of money for this created by kim at ktb creates and when i saw this i was like oh my gosh this is like whimsical meets farmhouse i don't know it was just so stunning it took my breath away and i knew i had to attempt it so you guys for any of these diys their channels are gonna be linked down in the description box along with the video, okay? So I'm gonna start with these two signs. They're St. Patrick's Day signs. We're gonna pop that clover off. And under us a burlap, I was like, those would look way cuter like that. So we're gonna take the strings off right here. Easy peasy. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some, I think this one is spackle. We're gonna smooth that over our holes and then we're gonna go ahead and set that aside and let those dry while we work on something else. Now, I'm, these are the insides of the boxes and I had these sitting to the side that I used for something else. I was like, this is the perfect DIY to repurpose these. So taking antique wax and a baby wipe, I am going to apply this to the bottom, all the sides, and then the top rim of the box. Not gonna do the inside because you are not gonna see that. And we are gonna repeat this process for all three of the boxes. Now I'm getting the leather Dollar Tree ribbon and I was like, okay, the tan is too close to this wood color. The white was like too stark white. So I ended up just going with the black. So for this, I'm gonna take some painter's tape and we're gonna use that to guide us so that we know where to put each strip of ribbon so that it is even across the board. So I'm gonna take this black uh, leather ribbon and I'm gonna hold it in the front and then I'm gonna apply my bead of hot glue to the ribbon. That way I have more control over it. And then I'm not putting the hot glue in the front. I don't want you to see the little ripple that it kind of leave the hot glue leaves in the front of our box. So I'm gonna repeat this step for all of the other ones. So once again, we do our painter's tape so that they all line up perfectly. We are going to put that hot glue on our ribbon, pull it to the back, skip the front, don't hot glue the front, and then we're gonna hot glue the sides and we are going to repeat and easy peasy, right? 
Okay, so after this is done, I try to get my furniture tacks, but they're just way too long. So then I go with the gold thumbtacks, which Kim uses in her video as well. And these push into these boxes so easy, y'all. Like they were hardly any effort. You do have to eyeball it, but I didn't do too bad, I must say. And you're gonna also do this to all four of your boxes. Now, after this, we are gonna move on to our signs again. So I'm just taking our standing block and we're gonna go ahead and just stress that down, clean it up with our Miss Little Ladybug, wipe it down. And now we're gonna connect these two. So I'm gonna take the uh, jumbo ginormous size craft sticks from Wally World and we are gonna hot glue those to the seam of our signs. I'm gonna use two of these big ones and then I'm gonna cut one down to fit in the middle of these two pieces as well. Now check out Kim's because she has like some, some crazy way of connecting these but it's like it's like a stronghold connection and it ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So check it out. Um, now we're taking just shipping paper, tracing out our sign, and then we're gonna hot glue this to the back so that we have a nice finished project. I have to do this or it would just drive me absolutely insane knowing that it wasn't covered. So taking Linen White by Rust-Oleum, we're gonna go ahead and do a messy brush on this. Didn't wanna put you through watching that whole thing. So we're done here. All right, so after we're done with this, I, you guys know me and my spacing and my measuring, and then I realize, oh gosh, we still have to put the faux ship flap on here. So I'm gonna take the pencil, I'm gonna mark where our boxes are. Now, you guys, I wasn't recording when I did the ship lap, but all I did was take a permanent marker and a ruler. Yeah, I'm, no, uh, yeah, that's me being like, did you really not record that? So now I'm taking this decal from Dollar Tree and oh my gosh, this decal is absolutely gorgeous. The green and the pink against that black is just everything. And I knew I had to use it for this piece. And let me tell you, this thing sticks so well. You don't have to use Mod Podge and it shows no lines whatsoever. If you guys remember that bloom decal I used on one of the spring DIYs, how you can see the outline of the decal, well, you do not see anything on this one and it, it just blew my mind. Absolutely loved it. So we are gonna just finish sticking those on. I'm just eyeballing the letter placement right here. And then we are going to attach our little boxes. So let's finish that up. Look at how pretty that is. All right, now with our boxes, we're gonna take our Dollar Tree super glue. I'm gonna use that a lot in this video. And then I'm gonna take the hot glue, put it on the side around our super glue, and then put it where we put our lines. Now I am making mine flush with the bottom of the sign. Kim made hers kind of like up a little bit. So like if you were to hang it, but when she displayed it and took a picture, it almost looked like it was sitting on the table. And I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. That way you could prop it in like a bookshelf, up on a counter. I mean, anywhere you want, or you could put command strips on it and hang it up if you choose to. So we're gonna finish putting the last box on there. And then I just decided to include this in here in case you guys wanted to see it. But I just took floral foam, I call it baby eucalyptus. And then I found these flowers on Facebook Marketplace and they just fit perfectly with this DIY. And this is absolutely my favorite. Do you see how gorgeous this is? Like if you cannot hear it, I'm smiling very big right now because I'm very proud of this. And I am so happy Kim created this because it inspired me. And I mean, look at how gorgeous this is y'all. All right, let me know if you like. So I'm taking this happy fall sign from Dollar Tree. And you guys, please tell me, is there like a trick to unwarp these? I don't even think that's a word, but I try to get the ones that are as straight as possible, but I mean, sometimes you can't help it. And this one was so warped and bowing in the middle, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead, do what we usually do. And we're taking that brown shipping paper I already traced it, we're cutting it out, and we are gonna just put that over our image on the other side because I like everything to look finished. I don't want anybody to ever look at the back and be like, what the heck is this? 
nobody would ever know that that was a Dollar Tree sign now that we're covering that up. So with this, you can use a glue stick. I like to use a hot glue gun. It's like way quicker and I feel like it wastes less material because all you gotta do is put it on the outside edge. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and paint this. Now I hopped on the bus. I did it, I hopped on the struggle bus. This brush I use to Mod Podge sometime and even though I rinse it out, I think some gets like stuck in there and it gets kind of stiff. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over to the Apple Barrel Synthetic Brush from Walmart. These are great, they come in a two pack and I think they're like less than three bucks. So for this sign, I'm just giving it one quick coat of the uh, blah, blah, Linen White by Rust-Oleum uh, because of course, you all know, I don't like that stark white look. I don't look a super, like a super polished look and uh, to go with all the rest of my decor, we're just doing a light coat here. So covering that up, now I'm taking my ruler and I am gonna make some shiplap lines here. And I'm just doing this with permanent marker. You can also use a black color pencil, a pen. Um, you could use a lead pencil as well. Works very, very good. And you guys can also create lines with painter's tape. So now that we got those, I'm taking our stickers from the Dollar Tree and I am going to cut out each of my letters. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to play around with the placement of my word. If I were just to like take them off and stick them on, most likely I would screw it up and like it would be all janky and wonky and like to one side or crooked. So then I'm taking this rub on transfer. If you see these, pick them up because I have used them on so many of my DIY projects in my videos here, and they are just absolutely stunning rub-on transfers. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some painter's tape. You guys know I like my straight lines. It's I just have to have the straight line. So I take the painter's tape, and then we're gonna take our letters one by one and place them on. Now, these Dollar Tree stickers, they are flimsy, they are thin. So take your time when you are peeling them off so you don't end up ripping your letter. And if you can do it really neatly, save the back of them because you can use those as stencils in future projects. So this font of this sticker was just absolutely perfect for this sign. Now, the bones of this sign itself are amazing, y'all. And you can put anything. You can put this and say home or, um, I don't know. I thought I had a lot more ideas. Okay, and now we're gonna take our rub on transfer. You take the white backing out off of it, you stick it on, and then you could use like a debit card or if you have a scraper. And what's great about these is if you go nice and slow as you're peeling it off, you can just put the, um, the cover back down and then just rub it a little bit more as you can see me doing and then your image will come off. But these look great. You can Mod Podge over them and they don't go anywhere. So yeah. All right, next step, my genius idea is I took these Jenga blocks because the sign is way too thin. There's no way I could attach like a, uh, a frame to it. So what I did was I got a garden stake out of my uh, garage and I'm taking these Jenga blocks and I'm gonna line them all around my side. This is gonna give me something to adhere that frame to. Um, I am gonna use the garden stake as our frame. And I was gonna use, uh, what do you call it, painter sticks, but I didn't have any long enough. I tried the Jenga blocks, they just didn't fit. So garden sticks you could get in the flower floral section of a hardware store and they are super inexpensive. Now I did try cutting it with my handsaw, that did not work. So I went out to the garage, I cut them, and uh, we are gonna attach them with some wood glue and then hot glue, again, immediate hold and then longevity with the wood glue. Now y'all know I make wood signs, right? Like I make them all the time. I, I cut wood frames all the time. So I cut these and at first I cut the sides too short. So then I cut them again and I cut the right length, right? Well, your girl did not play around with placement first. And what I did was accidentally pick up the short sides. That's what I did, you know? But you know, mm, it happens for a reason, okay? It happens for a reason. And this is why during crafting, don't get upset. You just work with what you got, all right? You just gotta work it out. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. 
I kind of got, got upset when I, you'll just see. Look at me putting this bottom on and there's such a big gap. Look at that. Like they don't even touch. So I just glued it on and I was like, you gotta go with it. We're not starting all over. So I do the same thing, wood glue, super glue. And then I'm gonna take to hide these huge gaps. Hank, go, sorry you guys. I'm gonna take this nautical rope and they come in three strands. So I'm taking one of the strands off there and I'm gonna hot glue it to kind of like the inside and then I'm gonna wrap it around. And I felt like this still went with like a rustic feel and didn't look too like, oh my gosh, why is that there kind of thing. And it covered up the huge gaps that I accidentally put in my sign. So I go ahead and I just, you could see, I wrap it like around, that way it covers that too. And then I just cut the back of that nautical rope off. And then we're gonna do that for all four of these sides. And this is the nautical rope, by the way, from Dollar Tree. So one, two, three, I'm counting four. This sign probably cost me like $5. And look at how gorgeous it came out. And what's nice is it's freestanding. Uh, you could also put a sawtooth hanger in the back of the frame if you choose to. And I just absolutely love how it turned out. Achieve this look. So these are the tile pieces from Dollar Tree. They are out right now. I just picked these up a couple days ago. And I'm gonna take that Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. You could use whatever paint you'd like that goes with your decor. And I'm gonna paint all three of these. I'm only gonna do one coat of this paint. We're not going heavy handed on it because we want that raised decal on there or whatever you call it. Uh, we want that to still be popping through and I don't want to put heavy coats of paint on it because then you're less likely to get those to come through when we distress this down later in the video. So we go ahead and do that with all three. I'm just using that same synthetic brush. You could use any brush. You could use a roller. I actually liked the brush marks in here. It made it look a little bit more distressed, a little bit more rustic. So go ahead and set those aside. Now I'm taking this piece of wood. It's 9.25 by 27 inches in length. And I've been watching a lot of Amber Strong lately on Facebook and she always just gets her acrylic paint, spritzes it with water and then gets her baby wipe and rubs it in and uses that as a stain. Now I had to try it of course. And I was actually pretty impressed with how this turned out. Now I must say that she does use um, apple barrel when she does it, which I think would be a little better because this Arteza paint is super thick. So it didn't spread as easily as I think apple barrel will. But I will say the Arteza paint is acrylic paint made for outdoor elements. So if you are making an outdoor sign, could be good, could protect your wood. So anyways, I do this on the sides. Of course I do it on the back. I don't care if it's not showing, it needs to be finished. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that. And then we are gonna take our tile pieces and I'm taking a sanding block. And um, this is a rougher sanding block and you are just gonna distress these down. You wanna get all of those grooves, all of those little raised edges that are on there. And this comes peeking through and that bronze that is on there just looks so pretty through that white and again you could do this with other colors they also have silver tile pieces as well and then i'm going to go ahead and stick these on here now we're going to play around with placement first so as you're laying them on your piece of wood make sure you're not pressing them down just lay them on top and look at how pretty that wood color looks with that bronze peeking through here. So of course me and my straight lines had to grab some painter's tape as usual. And gosh, my hands look so different with nails on them. They look so much more feminine. Okay, so now I'm spacing them out and I'm measuring the sides just to make sure that we got a consistent, you know, spacing going on. Now I can't say that I did such a great job with the middle, but I tried. So go ahead and rub those on. Yeah, I didn't do a good job cleaning that up there. Okay, so 
I'm replacing that on and then I go ahead and measure the middle and I don't know how I did not get this even because on my last attempt I I got it pretty good I don't know what I was doing here but you know learn from my mistakes anyways three dollars let's see three this project probably was like four or no we'll say like five dollars because the piece of wood if you went and got it cut or something five or six bucks and it looks so pretty. I cannot wait to get our walls painted to hang this stuff. Okay, look at how gorgeous. Oh. Look at all of that texture. You could see the beautiful wood grain coming through and these cutie patooties. Okay, so I'm taking these boxes from Dollar Tree. We took the insides out and then I'm sticking with the golden pecan stain color. You can also remember you could use like acrylic mixed with water. It also dries way faster, but surprisingly this stuff just sucked up the stain and then dried right away. So I'm doing all of the outside and then the bottom of it. It's just my preference. I like a finished product and I kept the inside um, just the raw wood color. We're going to repeat that stuff for all three of the boxes. Then we are going to take some wood beads. I just put them in an old bowl, put some wood stain on them, kind of shook a shook a shook them around. Then I poured them out, <laughs> tap, 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 dried them up. And then once those are dry, we are going to go ahead and um, then move on to our domino pieces. And y'all, these are actually like little wood pieces. So pick them up if you see them. They are great. We're going to do a lot more DIYs with them. And I am just covering these up with Rich uh, Black by Folk Art. Now I'm taking some vinyl decals I created. And this is permanent 651 Oracle vinyl. You guys know I need my straight lines. I get all of my vinyl, like my black and my white vinyl um, and my vinyl ease, which is my transfer tape on Amazon. And I just buy the humongous rolls of them. And then the vinyl ease is what I'm using for my transfer tape. And it is by far my favorite I've ever tried. And that is also in the Amazon store link. So we're gonna go ahead and finish up putting these decals on our little domino pieces here. And then we are gonna move on to attaching our little wooden beads for our feet. So I just made sure that I put these a little bit more inside the box so that they weren't poking out when it stood up. And we are gonna put Avi four on each box and we are gonna repeat this for all three of our boxes. So now I'm taking painter's tape and you guys know me and my straight lines. I wanna make sure that each one is a straight line and that each of them line up with each other because I obviously want them standing by each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this with all three of our little boxes. Isn't that so adorable? Pray, wait, trust, I love it. Now taking some floral foam from Dollar Tree, we're gonna go ahead and put those in our little boxes. And then I'm taking, I'm sorry, I don't know what these flowers are called, the tags were already off them, but I just cut these down and with two like bundles of them, I was able to put four in the middle and three on each side, but you were still able to see a little bit of that foam. So what I did was I took another bundle of Dollar Tree florals and I don't know what these are called either. Um, I'll sh they'll come into frame like right now, any day. Um, these right here they came out during summer and they are so beautiful and look crazy high-end so i stuffed those in there and then i took some of my scrap leaves from my stash and i took those in the back so that i'm covering it but you know like it still looks green and it looks full so y'all i cannot wait to show you these because they seriously these little buggers turned out so beautiful Look at how vibrant, like the, the like pray, wait, trust, it just pops out at you. And with those vibrant white flowers, these are just gorgeous and they would go anywhere with any decor. This so scrap wood, look at all this. Like this one even has like tons of nails still stuck on it. I have a bunch of different pieces. So this I think was flooring or molding. I have no idea, but I cut them down to size. Sorry for like kind of like that filmy uh, look. My phone was dirty from cutting these pieces. 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of these in linen white. Uh, I don't cut or paint the middle there, or the base, I should say. So now I'm just taking my wood glue and hot glue, and we're gonna glue our ends on first. And then I do the bottom, you guys. Oh, where is my mind? I literally put that on the bottom of the side. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on the side, there you go, that it's attaching to. Then our front. Now, I should have put wood glue and hot glue on the sides of this piece as well. Don't know what I was thinking, but if you were to like sell these or something, you would need to put um, nails through here just for added security. So just a heads up if that's on your mind. All right, so now that that's done, can't wait to show you this. Okay, so we're over at our Cricut Maker and y'all, I'm so excited. I just learned how to do this myself, so I'm excited to show you. So I already pre-made a rectangle and then got my text typed out, which says recipes, and this is in the font Easton. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this into my box and then I'm gonna go to arrange, move forward. So I am making the box bigger because we are going to make this a reusable stencil. So I'm gonna highlight everything and then I'm gonna come over here to the, the bottom right do slice. Do you see how it separates everything here? So we don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. And then we're going to come over to shapes again, and I'm going to get a square and I am going to turn this into any day now. Come on, click like little little baby lines. Okay. I'm going to, let's make them red. So you guys can kind of see them. I'm going to duplicate. I need two of them and we have to make sure, see the inside of like the R and then the P we need those to be connected. If we want to use this as a reusable trans, uh, a reusable stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one here, put it right there. Okay. So you see that now we are going to highlight the entire thing. And again, weld it okay so now you see that it's connected all right so now you guys i am using no joke index dividers this is from the dollar tree there's eight in here okay i already did a practice run i told you this is my first time doing this they do make stencil film as well uh, this is what I had on hand and I was like, oh, I am so, so trying this on my Cricut. So again, so here it is. It's already lined up for us. And then remember, we already made this box so that we are not going to go outside the lines when we paint. I am going to press continue. And then you guys, this is how easy the Cricut is to use. Okay. Like browse materials. Ooh, ooh, hello, focus, right? And then I'm going to go down to, I mean, you guys could see how many materials this thing cuts. It's absolutely insane. Okay. So let me go down. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. No, not paper. Plastic. Okay. Has all these different options for plastic. Well, right there. It says stencil film. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click stencil film. And you guys, this cuts like butter. So let's go over here. And it's gonna start cutting for us. It's gonna detect that we have the right tool, which we do. And yeah, let's get this bad boy cut. We'll go ahead and we, I am so excited that I figured out how to do this. Do you know how much money this would save you in the long run if you're somebody that makes like repeat items for craft shows or, oh my gosh, or like even during the holidays? Oh, okay. You guys, this cut so fast, so, so fast. And the setting, everything worked out perfectly. I didn't have to adjust anything on the machine. Oh my, God, I'm so excited. There we go. Okay, so now we're back. Now you're gonna weed this out just like you would any normal vinyl piece. But the thing is, when you take it off the mat, I'm using the light grip map, you need to go slow. You don't want to rip those connector pieces on your reusable stencil. So I'm just going really slow. And then look, you guys, woo, woo, we got a reusable stencil. I am so excited. This is going to make projects in the future just 
so much easier. And then I don't, you don't have to cut every single time. Like, yay. Okay. So I just held this down. I'm using my stencil brush from Dollar Tree, my rich black folk art chalk paint. And we are just going to stencil this in and y'all, it worked perfectly just as good as any other stencil. I'm so excited that I tried this out for you guys. Oh, I just, I'm so excited. And you could do this with the Cricut Joy too. It, it's the same blade that's in the Cricut Joy. So all you would have to do was cut this down to size. And there we go. Look at how crisp that looks. And then I took my sanding block, sanded over, and I tried a couple different things, but I was like, you know what? Simple is the way to go. So I put a mason jar in there with some florals, wooded spoon, index cards for recipes, and that is it. You guys, these wood scrap pieces turned out absolutely amazing. Hey, you ate this morning. I know you did because I was the one that fed you. You got a big, big bowl. Do you have the little dog's bowl too? Hank, 